Let's turn the squelch up on that. Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. On the way to Huntsville, or maybe it was on the way back, I promised an update about my squelch circuit that I was working on for the 7100. So here it is, let's take a look. Well, the last time that I mentioned my squelch circuit, on my way to Huntsville, or maybe on the way back, I believe I mentioned that there was a couple of caveats that I had found, and let's take a look at those right now. So I did use the uh, auxiliary connection into the car stereo, and that's what you're hearing right now. If we can find a station that you can hear. There we go. And as you can see, this is, as I turn the volume up and down, completely independent of the volume control, but I can squelch it, as I had showed you previously. The couple of caveats that I found are that when you have the auxiliary output connected, you don't get any of the beeps. So if I press the menu buttons, all of these things are, I do have the beeps turned on and the volume up. So each of these things you should be hearing a beep and none of that goes through the accessory port. I can live with that. Um, I don't really need to hear the beeps. It's kind of a nice prompt to let you know you've touched something, especially when you're driving, but I can live without it. The one thing that I really do wish that I could hear through the accessory port though is the voice functions and the voice recorder, which I've shown in a previous video, I'll have a link to that in the description. I use that a lot for doing CQs and such when I'm on the road, and I am in the voice recorder menu here, and this is transmit memory number one, and if I hit play, you will notice you don't hear anything. So. This is one workaround that I think I'm not going to be able to live with, at least for my use case, because I do use this quite a bit. I also got some suggestions in the comments from people that said, well, why don't you just use the speaker output? I originally didn't want to do that because I was afraid that I was going to need to connect an attenuator or build a little attenuator. I thought the speaker output would overdrive my vehicle's input, but at least one of the comments from uh, one of you folks out there, and forgive me, I don't remember the call sign of the person who made this suggestion, said that he had used the auxiliary output or the auxiliary input on his car stereo with the speaker output, and as long as the volume was down around 10 o'clock or so, it worked fine. So let's hook it up that way and see how that sounds. Okay. I disconnected the auxiliary output, excuse me, the accessory output from my little circuit, and I've got the speaker jack, the external speaker jack from the radio plugged into my auxiliary input now. And as you can hear over the car speakers, the beeps are working. And if I go into the voice recorder functions, we're not going to transmit, I'm just going to play it back here. Hello CQ, 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 calling CQ, this is Whiskey. So that all works, but obviously I've got this volume control and the car stereo. Delta Mobile calling CQ and standing by. And if you turn up the volume too much on the radio, that does overdrive the car stereo. So this works fine. And for many of you, this may be a good solution. In my particular use case, I have an external speaker plugged into the external speaker jack, and I have a small external speaker up front here with me. Sometimes I listen through the car stereo. Sometimes I listen through the external speaker, both whether I have somebody in the car with me or if I'm traveling alone, sometimes I like to listen to the you know broadcast radio or a podcast or whatever, but I still want to monitor the radio and I cannot do that through the car stereo because you can't listen to the auxiliary input and something else at the same time. 
So I use it both ways. Now, of course, I could solve that problem by just building a little switch box and switching between the external speaker and having it go to the car stereo, which that may be an option as well. There's a bunch of different ways to tackle this, but I think I am going to still continue with making the squelch circuit for the auxiliary input because there's a couple other things that go along with that as well. One thing to note, the IC7100 was the first touchscreen radio that ICOM released. I think back in 2016 is when this radio was released, and it's still for sale. You, you, know, you can still buy them new today. And in the settings menus, they did not have the ability to turn on the beeps or the voice functions to come through the accessory jack. The newer radios like the 7100, the um, 9700, the 7610, all of those radios in the settings menu, you actually can enable the beeps and voice functions to come through the accessory connector. So this isn't a problem with the newer radios. It's really only the 7100 that has the limitation. Anyway, I have made a few updates to the schematic and the circuit, and a couple of people have asked about that. So let's go take a look at that. Here's the schematic. Several of you have asked about this for building this yourself, and I will post this up on my website. I'll have a link in the description that you can find. Whoops, sorry about that. I'll have a link in the description, and I've got in here the parts that you need, including an optional jack if you want to use a jack instead of a plug. I'll explain that in a second here. And then I've also got the DigiKey part numbers for these if you want to order all the parts if you don't happen to have them around in your junk box. Junk box. I'm not sponsored by DigiKey or specifically endorsing them, but I use them quite a bit and I find them pretty good. Their service is good, their prices are reasonable, and they have tons and tons and tons of parts of every kind. So. That's just as a convenience if you want to use them. This circuit has evolved quite a bit since I first started this. Not the circuit that you're looking at here, but where I'm going with it, and I'll show you that in just a moment. This circuit is actually very simple. I got the general concept for this circuit from a website that was from a gentleman who was a broadcast engineer for years and he made all kinds of audio mute circuits and audio mixing circuits and I would put a link to it in my in the description for this but I can't find the site again I've done a bunch of searches trying to relocate the site that I got this original schematic from and I can't find it if I do find it I'll post it up on the website along with this circuit and the other information that goes with it. It uses a P-channel JFET, and a JFET is a junction field effect transistor, and a P-channel device is a type of transistor that when you ground the gate pin, which is this middle pin here, it turns on. And if you put a bias voltage on here, it turns off. Well, the squelch circuit that comes out of the accessory jack on the ICOM, on all the ICOMs actually, has greater than six volts on it when the squelch is closed. And when the squelch opens, this line goes to ground. So it works perfectly with this FET circuit. The little capacitor here, it's a two microfarad capacitor. This just softens the switching a little so you don't hear like a really harsh pop when the squelch opens and closes or when the audio mutes and unmutes. And then there's two more capacitors here and, and all three of these are the same value. They're all, actually it says two microfarad here and I think the part that I picked is 2.2. These are not real critical values. Two microfarad, three microfarad, 4.7 microfarad, anything in that range is gonna work fine. It'll pass all the audio in terms of low and high frequencies, so you'll have good fidelity. I wouldn't go much less than two microfarad. You might be able to do one microfarad and it'd be okay, but I wouldn't go much less than two. So the capacitors on the input and the output here 
isolate the transistor and the audio from any DC uh, bias. Like if there's any DC voltage that might be on whatever you're connecting this to, your car stereo, etc., and any DC bias that may be on here. The reason that's important is because if there's any DC voltage on here, when the switch opens and closes, you'll hear a really loud, harsh pop. And this prevents that and provides a little isolation. The resistors here to ground just provide the bias for the transistor so that it has a ground reference for this gate circuit here. And those are 33K. Again, not real critical. You could probably use anything from 20 to 50K, maybe even a wider range than that should work fine. And then one last transistor here, I've got a 0.047 to ground, and that filters out a little bit of the high frequency or higher frequency audio, because I was getting some wine from the audio in my truck, and this helped with that. That's really it. There's nothing more to this circuit than that. The ground is on the on pin two of the accessory jack. The audio is on pin 12 and the squelch circuit is on pin 13. This jack that I'm showing here in the circuit is the 13 pin audio jack. And I have a part number here for the plug and for a jack. If you wanna put a jack on here that actually connects to all of these and you wanna buy a 13 pin male to male cable to plug into the radio, you can hook this up that way. You can also just buy the 13 pin plug and then wire up just these three wires. You can also use the 13 pin plug that came with the radio that has just a little, it's got a little pigtail wire sticking out with all the wires um, coming out of the jacket that ICOM should have provided when you bought the radio. And you can use that. So however you wanna hook this up is up to you. That's it for just the mute circuit. Now, I said that this has evolved quite a bit. Well, I got a little bit carried away. <laughs> and this, this is in the, um, the schematic program that I'm using. I'm, I'm doing this in KiCad. So here's that original circuit that we just looked at on the other page. That pretty much hasn't changed. But I started looking at the jack and I said, you know, as long as I've got this 13 pin jack, I might as well bring out all the other stuff that you can have there. And then I was looking at some of the other ICOM radio manuals and the 7100 and the 7300 both have this 13 pin jack. I'm not sure which, if any other ICOM radios might have the 13 pin jack, but a lot of other ICOM radios, both older and newer, like the 9700, the 7610, our newer radios have this eight pin jack that has most of these same signals on it. Uh, there's another seven pin jack that has some signals for uh, for band switching for an amplifier or a tuner. And ICOM actually makes a cable that goes from this 13 pin jack to a seven and eight pin, two separate jacks to match a lot of the older radios out there. So I said, well, if I'm gonna do anything like making a kit or making a circuit, I'm gonna bring everything out that I can and or at least all of the important stuff. So I've got the push to talk line coming out, which is listed as send on those jacks. I've got modulation input. So this is if you wanna hook audio from a mixer or some other source for your transmit audio. This is the audio out from the squelch. And I've also got a jumper here that you can bypass this mute circuit because on the 7300, the 7610, the 9700, you don't need this little squelch circuit. You can actually, in the menu settings, you can set the accessory jack to have the audio squelched or not. 
they didn't have that working on the 7100. That was one of the first touchscreen radios, and it's been out since, I think, 2016. So they've enhanced some of this stuff since then. Then I've also got the squelch signal, which is what I'm using for this audio mute, if you wanted to use it for something else. Uh, FSK keying, this is for doing RIDI, if you want to put the radio in RIDI mode and actually just use a on-off key to change the tones. And the ALC jack, this is for an external amplifier. And then also there is a 13.8 volt output on the accessory jack. And that's good for about one amp. And I have this diode in here because some people like to use this with a relay so that you can have a relay operate when you turn power on to the radio because this only has 13 volts on it when the radio is turned on. You can have this control a relay and this is your reverse diode for the relay so you don't hurt anything inside the radio. So that's kind of where this went. I got a little bit carried away. This is a circuit board that I've been working on for it. These jacks may move around a little before I'm done. I'm not sure this is going to be the final uh, iteration, but this is uh, this is the circuit board. So I've got the audio and the push to talk are coming out on uh, one eighth inch phone jacks. And then the, the other ones are all coming out just on RCA jacks. And I've got both the 13 pin and the eight pin connectors on here so that this will work with a variety of ICOM radios. Uh, there are mail to mail cables that you can buy for both of these. And I'm gonna look and if I can, if I can source this, and get this built for a reasonable price and find the cables for a reasonable price, then I'm going to see if I can offer this, you know, if anybody's interested in buying some of them. Uh, if I can't get this thing built someplace where the price is what I would think would be reasonable, then I'm going to just maybe put it out as a kit and I'll get bare boards done and, and get parts. But we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's the update on this. If anybody's got questions, I would love to see them in the comments. Or if you got suggestions like, hey, why didn't you do this? Or why did you do that? Or whatever. Um, I'm open to suggestions as well. But that's the audio squelch circuit update. So it's kind of evolved beyond that a little bit. And as I mentioned uh, in the truck, I, you know, this may not be the right approach for some of you. You might just want to use the speaker jack. Uh, but if some of you are doing some other projects with the 7100 or any one of a bunch of ICOM radios, actually I'll probably have the list of the radios that this circuit should work for on the screen um, in the video when you're seeing it here. But that's about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD. Oh, please uh, subscribe and hit the like buttons. That always helps, and uh, I'd love to hear your comments on this. 73.